Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today we're going to take a look at a game published by Zoc by the name of Crossbool. And I know that some other publishers make sets of these. Um, I have the Zoc set, which I could say is pretty high quality. And this is essentially a hacky sack or beanbag type dexterity game where each player is going to get a set of these beanbags and they will try to get them closest to this uh, jack beanbag, which is you know essentially a scoring uh, me mechanism. Um, each round, somebody's going to throw that perhaps add a rule that governs how you're able to throw it. Maybe just use your offhand or maybe toss it backwards over your head. And then uh, whoever is going to be closest to that beanbag at the end of the round is going to be the winner. It's a re really simple game. I'll take a minute to show you just basically how you play it and how you score it, although it does kind of change from game to game based on your play style, based on the number of players you have, and so on. And then I'll come back and give you a few more thoughts on the game. So your typical cross pool set is going to come with what you see here. You could see each player is going to get three of these uh, bean bags in a color. And then um, there's going to be a jack, which is always going to be this uh, red color, at least in the version that I have. And you could buy additional sets of these. They sell them in both boxes of uh, one set and two sets. You probably want to get maybe six total sets to play up to a six player game. Maybe more than that might be a little unwieldy. And the way that the game is going to work is that uh, each it's going to be played over uh, two sets and each set's going to go until somebody reaches 13 points. And it'll begin with somebody just throwing the the jack here. And then each player is going to try to get their their, I guess, bag closest to the jack. Now, one important thing is that whoever throws the jack could require um, a certain additional rule. So for example, they could throw that and say, everybody must throw with their eyes closed or everybody must throw facing backwards or whatever. It's a, a, essentially a very creative game. And because of the nature of these bean bags, you could play inside or outside. You could play that you're going to be throwing them onto a bookshelf. You could play that you're going to be throwing them onto a car. So essentially the uh, play field is going to be different from game to game. And that's what I think where a lot of the charm of this game uh, works. So let's just say the player doesn't have any modification and typically it'll be the player who has fewer points who gets to pick that uh, modification to the rules and toss the uh, jack. And then players will just take turns trying to be the player who is closest to the jack. So they'll just each throw their three things. And after that, you are going to score. So the way that the scoring is going to work is that whoever is closest to the jack, so in this case, yellow is actually touching the jack, um, whereas green is not they will get a point. And let's just say green was over here and over here, and yellow had multiple balls that were closest to the jack, they would get one point for each. So I would say that these two are probably closer than that one, this one maybe not. So one, two points for yellow. And that's all that you would do to uh, score a, a uh, round. I should mention though that there are some combos and you could play with these or without these however you want to suit your play style and um, this combo here where you're actually touching the jack that would typically be worth two points so in this case the player might score two plus one points because this is again closest to the jack of the same player's color and touching is worth two points. Then there are some other combos that are laid out in the small rules book that you get so touching is two points if you get a worm, which would be like that, that would be worth three points. Um, then if you got all three touching like that, that would be worth five points. If you got a pyramid, if they stacked on like that, then, and you know, you are still scoring, you would get five points. Or if you did something like that, five points. Uh, something that's important is, uh, oh, this also, if you're on top, five points. Something that's important because of the nature of these beanbags is let's say that the green player was closest here and then the uh, yellow player threw it and they landed on top of the uh, green player. The green player's puck essentially would be invalidated and the yellow player would be scoring here. And these could continue to stack on each other like that if you're really good at throwing. And you could play in you know one-on-one -on -one or in a team situation 
And essentially, like I said, you're going to just play until somebody gets 13 points, they'll win a set, and you play until somebody wins two sets. But really, this is really a game where you are going to be inventing new rules each time you play, playing in a different area each time you play, playing with a different configuration of players, either playing one-on-one, -on -one, every man for themselves, or in a team situation. And it's just that kind of game that encourages that kind of rulemaking as you go along. All right, so that's Cross Pool, and I think that this is a game that uh, lives and dies by the quality of its components. Uh, these beanbags are super versatile. They hold up well inside or outside, um, and they really add what is, I think, interesting about the game. At its core, this is a pretty familiar dexterity game, maybe similar to something like Crokinole or um, maybe like Bocce, but these beanbags allow you to play inside, they allow you to play outside, they allow you to play um, so that you're throwing um, you know, on th things that are not just flat surfaces, and also it adds in that rule that if you land on top of another bag, then you're going to be invalidating their throw. So the game is better because of these components, and I think because of that, I would definitely recommend that you get a, a good quality set of these. I'm not sure of the, the uh, other versions of this game that are out. There are a lot of versions if you look on amazon.com or what have you but the uh, zoc version i have which they make a large number of different uh fabric selections for these and they sell them in both one uh player sets and two player sets so you can expand it to a, a larger number of players but every set i believe comes with the uh, jack and the two player sets come with like i said six of the the player pucks in the two different colors as well as a jack so that would be everything you technically need to play with two players but the more the merrier with this game and i think uh, around six or so is a, an appropriate number to play with um so yeah i mean crokinole is one of my favorite games i recently got a nice crokinole board and i've been playing a lot of that and it's a game that i really enjoy but it's a game that you essentially have to come to the board whereas this is a game that you could just take with you i have a little uh, backpack that i throw these into and it's essentially all, always fun waiting to happen whether i'm at you know a barbecue out at the lake you know or just you know um, a little bit bored sitting around the house. It's a really terrific game of this sort. And um, if you have kids, you know, it's it's even better, I think. It's a definite game that kids could play with adults and whatnot. And um, I really like the idea of it being an open-ended game, you know, with uh, the player who tosses the jack each round getting to, de the, uh, to uh, determine the rules of the game for that round. That, I think, keeps it interesting, keeps, keeps it competitive, makes those scores tighter. Whoever is behind gets to d dictate that rule so they could try to choose something that they think they'll have an advantage at. And overall, this is you know, a really superb game, and it's one that I think... Um, I know it's very popular in Germany, and that's just based on the manufacturer being a German manufacturer, but I suspect that um, as people are exposed to this, this will catch on. Uh, I usually review board games. I'm not sure that this quite qualifies as a board game, although it's you know familiar to a lot of board games that are dexterity games. But in any case, it is a lot of fun, and I would definitely recommend it. So those are my thoughts on Crossbool, and thanks for watching.